Hey, going back to Santa Monica triggered my PTSD. What's up? It's the Culture Man here investigating your favorite TV shows. And today we have a word of sponsor. That's right, folks. This video is sponsored by one of the most wonderful women I've ever known in my entire life. Athena! Hey, detective, don't let that PTSD drag you down. Stay strong and keep fighting. Thank you. Thank you. She's sponsoring me, so thank you. Anyways, so today I'm going to be doing a TV review, a review of a TV show, uh, Expats, which is a show I believe on Amazon Prime Video. Is, is it even on Hulu at this point? I, I don't even know anymore at this point. I think it is on Hulu. Um, it is a limited series. It's six episodes long. It is based off of a novel written by Janice Y.K. Lee, who is a novelist born in Hong Kong, but now uh, based in America. Similarly, it is directed by Lulu Wang, who is born in Beijing, China, and now also based in America. And I'm not particularly familiar with either of their works. I do know that a few years ago, Lulu Wang directed a film called The Farewell, and I've been hearing nothing but good things about the movie The Farewell, even though I personally haven't seen it. So what drew me to watching Expats is that Expats is set in Hong Kong. It is an American TV show that is set in Hong Kong. Ooh, okay. As a born and raised Hong Konger myself, um, I am curious to see what are they gonna do with that setting? How are they gonna portray Hong Kong? How are they gonna portray Hong Kong culture as well? Also, another interesting thing is a couple of years ago, I believe in 2021 or 2022, Nicole Kidman came to Hong Kong to film expats, to shoot expats. And when she came to Hong Kong, she didn't need to be quarantined, which is something that pissed off a lot of netizens. A lot of people were pissed because she got the special treatment. Um, so obviously, I sort of already knew that this TV show exists. I just didn't know that it's going to come out in 2024. So anyways, speaking of Nicole Kidman, she basically plays the same character again. And don't get me wrong, Nicole Kidman is an extremely talented actress. But once again, she's playing this really sad, bitter, unstable mother that she always plays, who's rich um, and kind of spoiled. So essentially, Expats is a story that features a an, an ensemble of characters. We have Nicole Kidman and another actor whose name is Brian T. And together they are a family with three kids. One of the kids disappeared. And so the entire show shows them grieving and being sad and reconciling with that fact. And the person who is responsible for losing that child is a Korean American girl by the name of Mercy. She has her own life. She falls in love, um, or, or at least she starts going to bed with a British guy who is actually married to another woman uh, by the name of Hillary. And we also have her story and their and her interaction with her Filipina helper. Uh, so it's just a bunch of characters living in Hong Kong and dealing with life, dealing with marriage failures and all that stuff. Hillary wanted David, her husband, um, to, to not have kids, but David really wanted to have kids. So there's that conflict and that's pretty much it and then there are a bunch of side characters who does some stuff but that's it so needless to say one gigantic downfall that this tv show has is that the characters are dreadfully one-dimensional i love myself a good slice of life tv show hell slice of life in hong kong 
sign me up. I remember、um, when I was having dinner with my Taiwanese friend Ken. I was like, "Man, you guys have Edward Yang. Like, you guys have Ho Xiaoxian. You guys have Edward Yang, and both of these directors are legendary slice of life Taiwanese directors. I wish Hong Kong has the same.、Uh, I mean, Hong Kong has a lot of great directors, but no good slice of life coming out of Hong Kong. But unfortunately, Expats is far from the slice of life that I wanted because." It doesn't really show what living in Hong Kong really is. It just shows a bunch of rich people talking and being sad, and the story is so untied with Hong Kong culture, and it's so distant from Hong Kong culture that you can literally take the entire story, set it in New York, and it will literally be exactly the same. Like I don't see the reason why. This story has to be set in Hong Kong, other than to I guess cater to Hong Kong audiences, which is by the way such a shame because expats cannot be shown in Hong Kong due to、uh, controversial protest footage, and of course the government is like, oh my god, protests, people voicing out their voices, democracy, ooh yuck. So of course they have to ban the show. Now we have episode one, which I thought was very weak of a pilot episode. Going into episode two, my hopes were a bit higher, thinking that it's gonna get better from here, but not really. Episode two is basically the flashback of the day the child Gus disappeared, and it again there's nothing all that interesting. I've written some notes here.、Um, specifically, I know this is not a normal, like. A non Hong Konger will not have these complaints. First of all, "wala wala," which are the sounds you hear in the back whenever characters enter restaurants or stores,、um, you know, chat chatter. They're called "wala wala." Cantonese "wala wala" is obviously not good because obviously it's so obvious that they recorded that shit in LA with a lot of non Cantonese speakers or poor Cantonese speakers. Next thing is, Hong Kong restaurants don't play music. Most restaurants in Hong Kong don't play music, especially the cheap noodle restaurants that、uh, that was at the end of episode one. And then on episode two, there is a kind of this local restaurant, this diner type restaurant. Usually, those restaurants don't play music, as far as my memory can remember. And another thing is, Mercy basically makes a friend, a Hong Konger friend, finally someone actually from Hong Kong, being part of the story. And I just found that really weird because they befriended each other at the MTR. And I'm not saying friendly people don't exist in Hong Kong. I'm saying that people don't make friends in Hong Kong that way. Usually in MTRs, everyone's just trying to avoid each other and not. Create any conversations and look at their phones. This is really alien to me. Now we have more restaurant scenes on episode three, where we have a very blatant and obvious Wong Kar Wai name drop. Where from、uh, a table in the in the side, we have a girl excitingly talk about, "Oh yeah, Wong Kar Wai and Christopher Doyle," which I I like a good Wong Kar Wai name drop, but it's so. Freaking obvious! Ever since the first minute of episode one, I've been waiting for a Wong Kar Wai reference. I've been waiting. Okay, tick tock. The clock is ticking. Ouch. Um, another thing is, there are a lot of focus in this TV show on helpers, Filipina and Indonesian helpers, and I really appreciate. Janice Y.K. Lee and Lulu Wang on focusing these very underrepresented communities in Hong Kong, but honestly, helpers don't act like that. There are so many scenes where、um, the helpers would speak Tagalog to children in front of、uh, the the parents, especially when the parents are American. It usually doesn't happen. We have a lot of scenes where helpers just Um, I guess it's different for every family, but there are just so many scenes that where where I'm just like, man, helpers don't act like that. So obviously, with all these complaints, I think the ultimate conclusion is that the Hong Kong that expats. 
portray is not the Hong Kong I know and love. I feel a bit alienated when I watched this this show, especially because of the locations being chosen. Again, most of the locations in the, this TV show is apartments, bars, restaurants, a yacht, and all these places are just very normal, everyday places. Why not just film this in New York? Why not write this entire story in LA? Why not make this in London? Why why not do it in Tokyo? Everyone wants to make a story in Tokyo now. Why Hong Kong, you know? And there are so many scenes where I'm just like, man, nobody speaks Cantonese like that. Nobody ever speaks Cantonese like that. There are some lines that is obviously English and then translated to Cantonese because people normally don't speak like that. Um, especially there's one scene I think on the last episode or the second last episode where uh, a middle-aged woman calls her mom and said she's lonely. And that sounds normal in English. Mom, I feel lonely. But the word choice she used was um, felt felt very childish to me, which made me laugh out loud. Anyways, let's fast forward to episode four, Mainland, where um, Nicole Kidman and Brian T basically go to Mainland in China um, to do some stuff. I'm not going to spoil it. And that was genuinely interesting. I thought to myself, oh, finally, they're getting somewhere interesting. But instead of reaching any interesting story, uh, any emotional climax, instead we get a lot of talking. And I know it is an artistic choice to have these characters talk and talk and talk and not have a lot of action happen. And I totally get why the writers would want to do that. But again, the characters are really one dimensional. The, uh, the the set design and, and, and the setting is so bland that I just feel nothing from it. The way the writers approached that episode almost treated it like a bottle episode because we just have a lot of scenes. We have Hillary and her mom being trapped in an elevator or lift, you know. Um, and again, it's just a lot of talking that leads to nowhere. It doesn't really reveal much about these characters other than things that we have already known or things that we have already guessed. Now we have episode 5, which is... So all the episodes in Expats are one hour long, but episode 5 is one hour and 40 minutes long. It is feature film length. For some reason, episode 5 felt a little different from other episodes, not only because of its duration, but also... It's almost like Lulu Wang is actually directing suddenly. Because the directing in all the other episodes are pretty basic. Wide shots, medium shots, nothing all that interesting. But suddenly we have a lot more, I wouldn't say interesting, but a lot more um, slightly more creative directions on episode 5. We also have a change in aspect ratio. Instead of 1.85, which is, you know, nearly 16 by 9, we have a way more cinematic why am I doing this? We have a way more cinematic 2.35 to 1 scope ratio, which I wouldn't say looks all that cinematic given that most of the shots are not even that cinematic or visually impressive. But what I really like about this episode is that this episode branches out to a bunch of side characters that the show has never explored before. Um, and it's like, hey, everybody's going through something. Everybody's suffering. And one of which is the character played by Will Orr, who is one of the most exciting up-and-coming actors. He is in the film Drifting, and his performance is really good. He's also in many other films, and I really like... Um, I think he's a promising guy. He's a promising actor. And in this episode, he plays one of the protesters in the 2014 occupying central protests, which is uh, a lot of people think 
uh, the 2019 protests in Hong Kong are like the first protests ever? No. Ever since 1967, Hong Kong has been protesting nonstop. And one of the biggest ones is in 2014 with the Occupying Central protest. And Will Orr plays a guy who is a very staunch protester. And we sort of see him uh, struggle, uh, talking to his mom. and And yeah, that's pretty much it. He doesn't have a lot of screen time, but whenever he is on the screen, I am pretty satisfied. But once again, I really appreciate the writer for branching out to other side characters and exploring other side characters. But the thing is, she never explores them enough. They all feel very shallow. They don't reach any conclusion. And the whole episode um, is just very sad. And, and in fact, the entire show is just really sad and it just desperately needs some kind of humor or some kind of release or catharsis, but it's just not going anywhere. It feels stagnant. It feels drab because of that. And uh, I guess the only other thing I really like about um, episode five is that throughout the entire episode, it's raining, which is pretty accurate. Sometimes in Hong Kong, it rains for two weeks straight non-stop day and night you know what that's pretty accurate um also i would like to point out that at the 39 minute mark there is an easter egg where 2019 protest footage and slogans are are, are shown on tv and are heard on the tv which is uh, hilarious because um the story here takes place in 2014 but um I was able to hear some protest slogans from 2019 showing up as an Easter egg, which is um, pretty uh, a nice little call out, I guess. So finally, we have episode six, and man, it's such such a weak ending. I'm sorry, but this is a weak ending. Um, the entire sequence where Hillary comes back to LA and attends some kind of wedding. Or, or some kind of ritual is just very bland and uninteresting. We have this safe and sound montage where Mercy just walks all around Hong Kong on the streets and in the Rainbow Estate, the, the very Instagrammable Rainbow Estate building. She was there. She is on pedestrian uh, building, uh, pedestrian bridges. And, and all of this happens on top of the safe and sound song. And it's just like, it just sticks out like a sore thumb because the entire show is sad and moody and slow paced. And then suddenly we are hit with this poppy montage, like an Instagram reel or something. We even have these film emulation, which at this point is already really cliche. Ooh, the streets of Hong Kong. Ooh, film. Ooh, what, what an aesthetic. Ooh, it's just such a cliche at this point. That just made my eyes roll. But what also made my eyes roll is that near the end of the episode, we have the three main characters, Nicole Kidman, Hillary, and Mercy, just staring at the camera and doing like confession booths, which I thought is just a very lazy way to to have the characters um, reveal what they think. Just tell, don't show. That's essentially what these shots and scenes scream. So, yeah. And there's also this very strong desperation for the story to be versatile. Like, Mercy's mom visits her and all she speaks is Korean. And, of course, we have Hindi being spoken when it was Hillary and her mom, and then we have a lot of Tagalog, and we have Cantonese, and then we have a lot of English, and it's like, oh wow, it's so versatile, so versatile. But this is one of those moments where it just feels to me that it's being versatile, it's being diverse for the sake of being diverse. There literally is no, there there is no benefit to including so many cultures and so many languages. It just feels like a showcase. It just feels like an exhibition rather than something that actually adds to the plot. So uh, yeah, overall expats, kind of disappointing. I honestly expected it to be mid and it is a little worse than I'd expected. I don't hate it. And certainly some concepts 
in expats has a lot of potential. A family grieving is actually a very interesting story idea that can be turned into something really, really profound and deep. And hell, it's set in Hong Kong. There's a lot of potential for the visuals and everything. Um, but unfortunately, expats is just a load of untapped potential and very drab character writing. So uh, yeah, I'm just gonna end it off here. I'm not a big fan of the show. I'm feeling a decent to strong 5 out of 10. So have you watched Expats? Comments below, let me know. Subscribe if you want more and thanks for watching.